Hello and welcome back to 27 Fox Place. I'm in the kitchen today preparing whole food ingredients and meals to get us through the week. And I always prepare something for lunch and breakfast each week. I have some produce that I need to wash, so I just need to fill the sink with water and add a few tablespoons of baking soda. And baking soda is one of the most effective methods to remove the chemical residue from produce. And the produce needs to soak in the baking soda solution for about 15 minutes, so while I wait for the produce, I can put a pot of water on for the hard boiled eggs and start a pot of quinoa. Quinoa is one of the ingredients for a salad I'm making and it will need time to cool off before I can add it to the salad and it'll take about 15 minutes to cook and so while that's cooking I can prepare a few other things that I need to put in the oven. We add garlic to just about everything but we still wouldn't be able to go through this entire bag of garlic while it's still fresh so I'm going to roast about half of the garlic and roast garlic is one of my favorite ingredients for things like soups and stews so I'm going to make a batch and store it in the freezer. I'm using an oven safe dish with a lid so that I don't have to use tin foil and once I have the garlic arranged in the dish I'll drizzle a little olive oil and set the dish aside until I'm ready to put them in the oven. We almost always have hard boiled eggs in the fridge. They're easy to make and they're good by themselves and they can be added to things like salads for extra protein. One of my favorite breakfast foods is sweet potato toast, but it's time consuming to make, so I like to cook a big batch all at once. And I like to use fat sweet potatoes so that I can get a large slice for the toast. Before I start slicing the sweet potato, I need to cut a piece from one side so that it doesn't roll around on the cutting board. And then I try to make thin, even slices about a quarter inch thick. I love the convenience of cooking sprays, but I don't love the harmful ingredients <laughs> or the disposable cans, so I'm using a refillable oil sprayer to coat the pan with avocado oil. And once all the slices are arranged in a nice even layer, I'll coat the top with avocado oil to keep them from drying out. And I've preheated the oven to 400 degrees and it'll take about 20 to 30 minutes to cook and thinner slices take less time so I'll set the timer for about 20 minutes. There's a few minutes left on the egg so I have just enough time to rinse off the produce and prepare an ice bath for the eggs.
It's been 12 minutes, so it's time to drain the water from the eggs and put them in the ice bath. The ice bath will help stop the cooking process and make them easier to peel. And I don't want to heat up the fridge with hot eggs, and this will help them cool down faster. Leafy vegetables stay crisp much longer if they're dry, so I like to use a salad spinner to remove the excess water from the produce, and then I'll set them aside to let them air dry. The sweet potatoes needed a few more minutes to cook, and I don't want to brown them in the oven because I like to reheat them in the toaster oven. But you could brown the slices in the oven and then reheat them in the microwave for a minute or two as well. When I meal prep, I try to choose foods that will take a long time to cook and reheat well. <laughs> and ideally, I want to cook foods that don't need to be watched so that there's always more than one thing being prepared at the same time. And while I'm waiting for the sweet potatoes, I can get started on the soup. And I'm a huge fan of pureed soups. It's a simple and tasty way to prepare veggies. And today I'm going to be making butternut squash soup. And roasting the squash will add a ton of flavor without a lot of work. And once the squash is in the oven, I'll have time to prepare something else. And because the squash has already been chopped, the only thing I need to do is chop up half an onion to roast with the squash. Before I add the veggies, I'll coat the baking sheet with avocado oil. And avocado oil has a high smoke point, so it's a good choice for roasting. It's important not to overcrowd the pan when you're roasting vegetables. If the pan is overcrowded, they'll still cook, but they won't have that rich caramelized flavor. So before I season the vegetables, I just need to spread them out in a single layer. Having meals prepared for lunch and breakfast is fine, but I like to cook something fresh for dinner. So I try to prepare as many ingredients as I can make time for, and I keep meals pretty simple for the most part. Then I stock up on the same produce and ingredients, and then I plan our meals around what we have in the fridge. And having produce washed and chopped ahead of time saves time, and because I can combine the ingredients in different ways, I have more meal options to choose from.
sweet potato is ready to come out of the oven and the oven is already at 400 degrees Fahrenheit so I can just put the squash right in the oven and it'll only take about 15 or 20 minutes for the squash to cook so while I'm waiting for the squash I can prepare the salad for this week's lunch. To make cleanup a little easier, I try to reuse as many dishes as I can when I'm meal prepping, and I need a large bowl to make the salad, and since the eggs have cooled down, I can put them away so that I can free up the mixing bowl, and I'll just give it a quick rinse so that I can use it to make the salad. I'm prepping a salad for lunch this week and it's a hearty protein packed salad that will store well in the fridge for up to four days and I'll be sure to include the recipe in the description box. You could use any number of fresh herbs in this recipe, but today I'm just using a few tablespoons of chopped chives and I'll add about a cup of chopped parsley. But you could add fresh dill, tarragon, or mint to change up the recipe. You could add just about any type of nut or seed to the salad to give it a little crunch, or you could replace the nuts with celery for a crunchy substitute. I happen to have walnuts that I need to use up, so I'm just going to give the walnuts a coarse chop and add them to the bowl with the rest of the ingredients. I'm adding about four ounces of goat cheese and we don't eat a lot of cheese and when we do it's a small portion just to add a little flavor and if you're not a fan of goat cheese you could always swap it out for feta or parmesan cheese but if you're dairy free you could just leave it out altogether or make a dairy free substitution. The squash is ready to come out of the oven, but it needs to cool down before I can make the soup. So I'll just set it aside and put the garlic in the oven. And the garlic will take about 40 to 45 minutes to cook. <laughs> so I'll have plenty of time to finish up in the kitchen before it needs to come out of the oven. I have a head of kale that's been washed, so I'm just going to chop it into bite-sized pieces and add it to the salad. And the kale is optional. You could skip it all together or substitute it for spinach or some other lettuce, but kale will hold up better in the salad. Kale is a tough and fibrous leaf, so I'm going to add a little olive oil and lightly massage it into the leaves to make it a little less bitter and easier to chew.
to level up the protein in this salad, I'm going to add a pound of shrimp and nothing goes better with shrimp than garlic. So while the pan is heating up, I'm going to mince a few cloves of garlic to saute with the shrimp. Whenever you're cooking with stainless steel, you always want to preheat the pan before you add the oil. Heat causes expansion, which helps to keep the food from sticking to the pan. Shrimp cooks very quickly, so I've saved it for last. And once the shrimp is almost done, I'll add the garlic so that I don't overcook it. And the shrimp may look like it's been cooked already, but I'm using red Argentine shrimp that has a red color when it's raw. I had to split the shrimp into two batches so I didn't overcrowd the pan and I'll set the shrimp aside to cool down while I finish making the salad and the quinoa has had plenty of time to cool down so I can add it to the salad and mix everything together. I love salads for their versatility and variety and the base for this salad is quinoa and chickpeas which are both nutrient dense foods that are high in protein and fiber and it can be served on its own or as a side dish and it'll keep in the fridge for up to five days. I'm making a simple lemon vinaigrette to complement the cucumbers and herbs in this salad and vinaigrettes are typically one part acid and two parts oil and I've squeezed about a half a cup of lemon juice so I'll need to add a cup of olive oil. I'm keeping this dressing simple, but you could add minced garlic and herbs to add even more flavor to this dressing, but I'm only going to add one teaspoon of Dijon mustard and one teaspoon of honey to help balance out the lemon, and then I'll mix the ingredients together and whisk in a cup of olive oil. There are a lot of different ways to assemble this salad. You could mix everything together and keep the dressing in a separate container until you're ready to serve it. But I decided to keep the kale separate and mix the dressing in with the quinoa mixture. And then I divided the kale between four containers and topped it with the quinoa mixture.
I'm adding shrimp to the salad, but you could serve it alone or with another protein like fish or chicken. I finally broke down and bought glass meal prep containers and I've been gradually switching to glass containers for food storage over the years and glass has its disadvantages but it's a much better choice for food storage. Glass doesn't absorb odors and stains and it doesn't have harmful chemicals that can get into the food and of course glass is breakable but it does outlast plastic and it's biodegradable which is better for the environment. The soup is the last thing I need to prepare and the squash is still warm but it's cool enough to puree in the blender. But it's important to let the veggies cool down before you add them to the blender. If the veggies are too hot, <laughs> the heat will cause the ingredients to expand and blow the top off the blender. I'm adding chicken stock but vegetable broth would work just as well and I started with two cups of broth but I prefer a thinner consistency so I ended up using a quart of broth to get the right consistency. This soup is simple and easy to make and it can be stored in the fridge for up to a week or in the freezer for up to three months. This recipe makes two quarts so I'll keep half in the fridge and I'll store the other half in the freezer. And I'm using a freezer safe container and because I'm using glass I want to make sure and leave room at the top because if there's not enough room the glass can break when the soup expands. Using a paint pen to label the contents of the jars and once the ink dries it'll stay put but it's not permanent. The ink is water based so it washes off with a little soap and water. And I'll be sure and leave a link for the pens in the description box. It took about an hour and a half to prep and clean up today but anytime you cook a meal in the kitchen there's an opportunity to stock up the freezer with meals and ingredients. So instead of making enough for one meal always try to take the opportunity to double the recipe and store half in the freezer for a rainy day. I have enough sweet potato toast to last for the week and I'll freeze the rest and I'm using parchment paper between the potato slices so that they don't stick together in the freezer. It takes just as much time to roast one head of garlic as it does to roast a large batch. <laughs> so roast garlic is another staple that I like to keep in the freezer. So once the garlic cools down I can put it in a freezer safe container and store it in the freezer for up to three months. That's all for today. I hope you liked this video and if you did remember to give it a thumbs up and be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications before you go. And thank you so much for spending your time with me today and I hope to see you next time.